Hello and welcome back. On the previous video, we have learned how to create a trigger element and use the get started option. And we have also um, learned how to create our first text element. On this video, we are going to explore more how to um, create a meaningful chatbot flow. What I'm going to show you first is how to change the label of your flow. So as you can see here, we have a label that is right above our element. We can actually change this. So let's say this is the start of our flow. So let's name our flow start flow. And then for this one, we can configure this. And example, we, we want to greet our subscriber. So we need to use the name of our subscriber. To do that, we need to use the first name of variable. So let's say hello, and then click the first name button here, and then the first name of variable would appear. It would be replaced with the actual name of our messenger user. And then let's add a welcome message example. Welcome to Chuck's Burger. All right, we are going to test how the first name of variable works. So let's confirm our changes and then let's save this. All right, after saving, let's send a test. Great, we have just received the message that we have composed earlier. And as you can see, the first name variable has been replaced with the name that our messenger user used on their Facebook profile. So we can even test um, the variables that are available here. Example, first name and last name. And we have more variables available if you click the custom button. So if you click this and on the drop down, you'd be able to see here more variables like the PS ID or subscriber ID, the gender, locale, time zone. So let's try to use um, more variables. Example, um, gender. And then let's add the PSID. So let's say, welcome to Chuck's Burger. And then your gender is, and your PSID or your subscriber ID is. So let's confirm the changes and then click save. And then let's send a test again. All right, so as you can see, hello, Calvin. So this is the first name variable. Marcelino, this is the last name variable. Welcome to Chuck's Burger. Your gender is male and your subscriber ID, that is our user subscriber ID. Great, so now we have learned how to use the custom variables. Let's add buttons. All you have to do is click the add button here. And let's say this is button one and we can use different button types. But for now, we are going to use the very first type, the next step um, button type. So I'm going to confirm the changes and then we can add another button, button two. And this time we are going to use web URL. So for the web URL, we are going to enter a website URL below. So let's say we want to redirect our users to Google or we can add any websites here. Just enter the URL of your website. The next we are going to add our third button and this time we are going to use call. For the call, we need to put our internationally formatted numbers. So this is an example of a phone number that we can use. So we can confirm the changes now. And as you can see, we are not able to add another button because in Facebook, we are limited to only create three buttons. You cannot create more than three buttons. So after creating three buttons, we can now configure this one. So if we hit save, we encountered an error. So what could this error mean? So what's wrong here is because our button number one needs a connection. Whenever we use the next step type, we need to configure a connection to it. So as you can see here, we have a node or a socket here. We need to connect it to another message. So to add or to connect it to another message, just click this node and then click anywhere on the screen where you want to add the new message. So in this case, I'm going to click here and I'm going to use the text element again. So as you can see, this text element is not yet configured because we have an error here. 
So let's configure this. Great. So let's confirm the changes and let's name the label. So let's say next message. Great. We now have two elements connected to one another. And let's see how this works by clicking save and send a test again. All right, so we have received the message that we have composed. And as you can see, we have three buttons here, button one, button two, and button three. Remember that on button one, we used the next step type. For the button number two, we used the web URL type. And for the button number three, we use the call type. So let's test each button one by one. If we click button number one, it will trigger the message that was connected to it. In this case, the next message. Let's test button number two. So as you can see, after clicking button number two, we were redirected to google.com because that is the web URL that we configured on our button number two. So let's test button number three. In this case, we are on desktop browser. That's why we don't have a native application that handles phone calls. But if your subscriber opens this on their mobile phone, then the native handler of the phone call would be triggered. That is, your subscriber would be able to call or text on the number that you have configured here. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Let's recap what we have learned on this video. We have learned how to configure the label of each um, flow. And then we have learned how to use the variables. And we have learned how to add a button. And we learned that we can only add up to three buttons. We learned how to use the next step button, the web URL button, and the call button. And lastly, we have learned how to connect one element to another by using the next step button and then adding the connection here. In the next video, we are going to build on what we have discussed here. So see you in the next.